Yo, 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 it's Greg Freel from Freelance Music and Media here with the legend that is Darren Saul in <laughs> Sydney. You're too kind, mate. You're too kind. How are you, sir? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Not as good as you. You just look like you've stepped off the beach from the French Riviera. Um, I have a very small like window <laughs> set behind me, um, that, whereas I have like a construction site on that side <laughs> and here it looks nice so yeah now uh, it's it's smoke and mirrors dear boy smoke and mirrors um yeah so we we caught up um so, what, maybe six to eight weeks ago now yeah really I mean? time has flown my god crazy um and um we touched base talking about all things from prints of yes, course, of course. Um, to branding and marketing and social media, which is um, our area. And um, it's just been such a, such a strange time. Like, it's just like the time is just, it, it's a weird time loop because it's, it's kind of like, it's moving so slowly, but moving so quickly. Yes, I agree <laughs> you with know? you. This you whole, know, this whole lockdown was, has just flown, but it's actually, it's been three, four, five months for us. And it's just almost yeah. like that. I mean, I had somebody say the other day, the first couple of months of lockdown, it was like, this is going really slow. You're literally counting the days and you're like, okay, it's week four, yep. you know, that kind of thing. And then June and July just disappeared. Yep. I, you know, I don't know what it is. It's, it's a weird time trick. I don't know what it is. Yeah, weird time but, um, Yeah. So uh, how have you been, been coping with the whole thing? You've been all right? Yeah, look, I've been pretty good. You know, in Sydney, we're just starting to, you know, get out a bit more and do, and work a little bit more. I am in particular, but, you know, I'm still being very mindful of being as cautious as I, as I can be. And, um, you know, just not doing things that I don't need to do, only going doing the bare necessities. Um, but at least I've been out and about doing a bit of work with people, but social distancing, which has been good. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you... How do you guys approach the whole mask wearing thing? Is that an issue over there? Or is there some yeah. resistance to that? Or In Sydney, a lot of people are starting just recently because we had a little bit of a, a re-spike. So everybody's jumping on the masks and everybody's starting to wear the masks. But in Melbourne, for example, it's absolutely mandatory because their situation is not as great as ours. Um, right. So um, Sydney, you know, we're just on the cusp and we're, you know, but people are wearing the masks, which is good when they mm -hmm. go out which is nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just such a strange thing. We, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but we've had, it, we've had so many mixed messages from, from the government and everything from, from the start. It was kind of like, don't wear a mask, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. I mean, like, okay, what, what's going on, you know? Uh, and, and we initially had the, um, yeah, masks aren't going to do you any good. And then now it's like, no, you have to wear a mask. Yeah. And you're like, so, um, but I, I think caution more than anything else you know if, if there's a chance that it can help well guess what i think i'd much rather wear a mask than be on a ventilator yep 100 percent. i totally agree. you know it's just kind of being being sensible but um yeah so how are you finding um you know with clients and and, and that kind of thing i, I i'm certainly finding that when, at, the, at the start of lockdown there was a lot of call for people people were just kind of going oh my god i know i should be online more Yep. I know I should be doing more content and you know, but how do I go about this? Are you finding it, you know, you're still getting a lot of people um, annoying you in that, in that regard? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, and one thing that's really interesting in the last three, four months, I don't know whether I'm imagining it or not, but I seem to feel that the attention and the energy of, of people on social media is just through the roof. Are you finding the same thing? Uh, yes. Um, actually, it's the thing. It, it's a weird one. It's because I've kind of uh, been in sort of two sort of different headspaces. As you know, there's my music side of things and there's the marketing side of things. Yep. So rather than utterly confuse people at the moment, I kind of took off the foot off the gas in terms of doing the marketing business side of things. I'm still doing that, but but I'm not going heavy on social with content to do with that gotcha. because I've, I've just put this record out 
and it's utterly confusing if I'm kind of talking about this and then and that. You know, and it's and it, for everybody out there, it's a fantastic record. So please make sure Thank you tell so everybody much. how to how to find it. Thank you, um, but yeah, so I'm kind of like, so I haven't been doing podcasts and that kind of stuff because you know that's kind of one area, and then there's there's this and I and I, and I do think people just do get confused really easily. So, yeah. um, but certainly. In, on LinkedIn in particular, there's some friends of mine who they're destroying on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, you know, they're, put, they're putting a post out and I'm like, oh, I can't believe the left will be engaging on this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and I'm kind of like, no disrespect to them, but I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not like it's massively valuable or anything like the content that they're sharing. It's, it's more kind of like, I'm doing this. This is yeah. happening just now. And you're kind of like, all right, okay. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of getting loads of comments, loads of likes. I'm like, yeah, it's strange. I just, you know, it's, I just feel that there's so much attention on social media at the moment. Everybody's pumping out content. Uh, everybody's marketing, and you know, and so they should be. But I just feel <laughs> like the all of a sudden in the last three, four months, everybody's just woken up to the fact that social media is a powerful tool. It's kind of yeah, no, absolutely. All of a sudden, just wow. yeah. <clears throat> I think the thing is, it's really, really funny. Uh, the, well, the good thing is, is that yeah. I've had a lot of people who have been to my social media workshops who are now doing all of the things that I said for them to do Excellent. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of content, which they didn't do straight after the workshop. Okay. But, you know, it's like, you know, six months on, all of a sudden, they're, you know, they're, they've finally got the confidence to do it. Yeah. And there's you know, a couple of people in particular um who are just smashing it they're just they're putting out a video every day and they're, they're coming on and and guess what they're getting clients yeah and th that actually brings up a really good point i mean you know i do a bit of uh, i do some webinars with social media you do a lot of webinars with social media and before we started this uh session we were just having a little chat and you mentioned that a lot of the questions you get on your webinars always seem to be the same yeah and I, and I find yeah. exactly the same thing. So maybe let's chat a bit about, um, it'd be cool to chat a bit about what, what, what you're finding people really need. What, people, what are people desperate for that they seem to be confused I, th about? I think the thing is more than anything else is everybody is always looking for, um, we used the expression before we came on, um, like a magic bullet, yep. something that's going to be the secret sauce, the thing that's going to suddenly make everything click into place. Yeah, yeah. And it's very very rarely is it one singular piece of content or something like that happens it's the cumulative effect of loads of content over a longer period of time yep. and it's a longer brand build it's it's not sales yep. and it's that, di that distinction between social media for brand and brand marketing rather than a, a sales tactic 100 percent. and everybody so, always says well does it get me results are you seeing things happening? Are you seeing your efforts being rewarded? And I always have to say it's a long game. Yes, I get a lot of great feedback along the way. I do have some rewards, but it's something that you have to dig into and be prepared to be patient. I remember when I first started doing podcasts about three years ago, yep. and I'd been only been doing it maybe maybe three months, um, and I remember somebody saying to me, "So." you know, what are your listener figures like, you know, what, yeah. you know, how's it going? And I said to them, ask me in 18 months. Nice. And they went, what? what? <laughs> I'm like, yep. You know, um, and the thing is for me, what ended up happening was after about six months of doing it, what was happening was like locally on the business sort of networking scene, I just became known as the podcasting guy, the guy that, that does podcasts. Right. So then I ended up doing podcasts for, other businesses and picking up a podcasting package together yep. um, for them. Yep. Um, and that wouldn't have come about if I hadn't been, been doing the podcast for myself. So, I mean, it's, you know, there's a long-term brand build strategy, but in terms of what ends up happening from it, um, that, you know, are little offshoots of potential business or whatever, then Definitely. You, you don't necessarily plan for them. I, I, I had no plans to put together a podcasting package to do that for businesses yeah. that hadn't thought about it in those terms but then when it when it presented itself to me, I was like, okay, well that's a that's a way to go yeah um 
so and, and yet, I mean, you just end up doing so many things just because oh, that, that would work. You know, I don't see why that wouldn't work. But yet, uh, back to your, your original point, I mean, people, they're, they're always looking for that, like I say, that sort of the magic bullet thing, but they don't have patience. Um, they're, they're always, you know, the answer to most questions is patience. 100%. Um, just w wait longer, <laughs> spend yep. more time doing it. Yep. Uh, consistency being consistent with your approach and what it is that you're doing. And I, and I think that's the hardest because I mean that we're all dealing with everything else that we're doing, you know, in our, in our businesses, Definitely. but also at the moment with, with life, you know, obviously it's incredibly complex and yeah. not straightforward, yeah. but um, you know, and sometimes life does get in the way, you know, um, but I think it's, it's not overly judging yourself on, I haven't posted, in the past two weeks, well, because you've been getting on with your life, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to completely massively adversely affect everything in your business. If you get back to it whenever, you, whenever you can, um, and it's if people are sort of falsely judging themselves against some huge corporate or somebody who's a, like a, a, a large figure, like say Gary Vee, who has yep. you know a, a massive team of people that are pumping out that content. Yeah. Now, you know, you can't compete with that unless you're, you know, you've got the resources to do, to do so. So, um, I mean, if you're just, if you're just one person and trying to attempt to do something along the lines of what Gary Vee is doing, all you'd be doing is creating content. Yep. <laughs> you know, and, and, you, <laughs> and you just wouldn't be able to do anything else. But I, th yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it comes down to patience, consistency, uh, and engagement, you know, that, and it's always that question people always ask, how do I get people to engage more with my content? I'm like, well, for a start, don't be boring as whatever. Um, and most, but most people are really, really boring. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like, I wouldn't watch you for an hour. I wouldn't yeah. watch you for 20 minutes. I wouldn't watch you for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, so Sorry. it's create engaging content, but then also engage. I mean, I'll, it's the thing that we both tell people all the time is, well, if you want to be engaging, you, you, you need to engage with the people within the community yep, definitely. more than anything else. Yep. Like, it's, like, um, it's almost like the old saying, a friendship is a two-way street. Yeah. Exactly the same with social media. If you're not showing some interest in some other people, they're not going to show interest in you. Yeah. Um, I use this really, really cheesy metaphor i mean me cheesy well <laughs> just doesn't happen but um and um but you know i was i was on a call with a, a, a client and i was talking to them and I went, actually you know what that actually as cheesy as that sounds that actually perfectly explains what it is i'm trying to say because we were talking about how facebook engagement it just how it's just um organically it's just really really hard to get people to to engage with your content and all your thing and you have ma maximum two percent of people who like your page will will actually see your content and i said yeah the, the trick here especially if you're a business is to engage in facebook groups i said the, so the way i explained it was if you think that you as your business you have your business page and the way you exist is kind of like it's kind of like you're in a cottage in a field in the middle of nowhere. Right. And nobody actually knows that you're there. Yep. But whenever you go into the village yep. and meet all the locals and engage with them, then they're, oh, you, you, you live up there. Guess what? Then they actually know where you are and who you are and what you do. And then they find your page. I love that. So it's, I love that. Um, it's so cheesy, but, it, so, but it's So going but it's to the true. village is like going to the group. Going to the group. So, I but, that. and I said, if you start thinking of it like that as community, you know, and, that, and that's the whole thing. It's Facebook is meant to be a community. And, and if you are engaging in that group or another group, some more groups that you're in, the more people are, are finding out about who you are. So it's all of these connecting strands. Yep. I love it. Um, but, and that's the thing. It's like, you could just be in that cottage in the middle of nowhere and nobody knows you're there. Yeah, yeah. And that's people saying, well, I've posted on my page and I don't get any engagement. I'm like, yeah, because nobody really knows that you're there in yeah. the first place. Yeah. You know, not, you're not so, being, I mean, 
you're not being engageable. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, even like taking that to like um, some of the engagement that I'm doing with like my, my music at the moment, I am constantly posting in groups. Yeah. Um, and you know, different music groups, um, and especially with you know, the first single, because it was to do with the whole lockdown situation, and the album's called Love and Lockdown. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm posting in a lot of lockdown groups yep. to do with entertainment and that kind of stuff. So yep. um, people are going to be curious in the first place because of that. So apply that to you know, the business community, and it's, well, where where are the where are your tribe you know where are the people that are going to be interested in your content mm -hmm. so um yeah as, so as cheesy as that you know metaphor is i'm kind of like yeah it works it, you know it, it, it makes sense i think it helps illustrate the point yeah you know that you're you're anonymous otherwise really because yeah. it's just it's it's this, it's this huge vast landscape that everyone's trying to navigate um and we don't have a map Wow, that was a really extended metaphor. <laughs> but I really love that um, analogy as well, you know, the you being alone in the cottage and then you going into the village to yeah. connect with the community. I think that's so powerful. And that's something that I always am drumming into um, everybody's heads as well, is to remember to use your groups because a lot of people mm -hmm. forget about the power of the groups. I think of a group as an extension of my audience in a yeah. way. And just, and whatever I want to do, you know, whatever strong messages I want to put out on my page, I'll also put it out on some groups because that draws people back to me. And it's a huge missed opportunity if you really don't leverage those groups because they have potentially hundreds of thousands of people in an audience worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's absolutely. Quite amazing. Yeah, I agree. But um, yeah, I, I, and I, I think certainly the, with if you're looking at engagement and if you know, people are kind of like trying to kind of second guess the algorithm or like, you know, yeah. I think um, groups are like, if you're looking for the secret sauce, then I think that's kind of the closest thing you're going to get Definitely. is, well, that, that's where people are, you know, yeah. and, um, and are, are you providing value to people in those groups? Yeah. yeah. You know, so it, you know, certainly there was, you know, a client I was dealing with a couple of weeks ago and, and they were, we were talking about the groups thing. Like, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people don't even think about that other side of it, but it, it can be extremely powerful, extremely useful. And I've, I've even got some opportunities to speak at, um, you know, overseas and a lot of the time just pro bono, just for awareness, but all through groups and international groups, which has been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. And, Come back to your your point about saying about how can't believe how active people are on social. Yeah. You know, over the past few months, um, it's it's so there's been a lot of networking groups that I've been involved in that all of a sudden they've gone international yeah. or they've gone beyond just being a local group, uh, and that's how I met you. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, we met through yeah, some just, other mutual friends on a group. Yep. Yeah, um, and it's kind of like. It's a weird thing that why have we all kind of gone, oh, yeah, we don't actually just need to stick to Sydney or Glasgow or, you know, we can actually just engage with people anywhere on the planet because the work that we're doing is digital. Absolutely. You know, we're not building houses, you know. <laughs> uh, um, but, um, yeah, and, and I, I think it's so interesting just how the mindset has just shifted to it's you know yes we can actually look globally you know yeah. and and network globally i agree and yeah. i think we were, we were chatting about this as well just before we started uh, recording the session in that you know we kind of we in a way we've got used to a new type of normal and a lot of it suits us a lot of it is comfortable so when we move forward it'd be nice to have a bit of a hybrid as to what was and what is now yeah, I think that's a good yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I was talking to a music friend of mine yesterday. He runs a, a shop uh, locally, a music shop, which obviously has been largely closed due to the, the lockdown situation. But he also has an online side of the business, yeah. which has actually been sustaining him throughout. Because yeah. um, obviously, people are kind of like 
kids are stuck at home and it would be really good if we could get musical instruments for them to play you know there's there's that but uh and and we were just talking about that you know that 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 whole thing about um people people yes people are on people are on all online and, and just looking for looking for different things they're looking for different ways to stay active yep. but um I, I was saying to him that my life like everybody's has slowed down dramatically it's less hectic less frantic yep. and i would quite like to keep it that way yeah you know um you know and if i you know this can be periods where it gets a bit busier you know or kind of running around a wee bit more but um certainly like normally on a tuesday uh tuesday for me would always just be insanely busy yeah, yeah. um I'd maybe do a couple of calls uh, in the morning and maybe have a meeting. Uh, and this is pre-Zoom, if you think about it in those terms, right? I would go and have, maybe have a meeting with somebody in the morning, which would involve me going somewhere. Right. And I'd always be trying to squeeze that in because I then would have to be uh, over doing this choir project, which is it's maybe about 45 minutes away from my house. Right. So drive for 45 minutes, do the choir for an hour, and then drive for four or five minutes, either come home or go to the studio. So then I'd have an hour between then doing another choir project. Oh my God. And then when I finished that, I would have half an hour, four or five minutes, to then go from one side of town to the next to where my studio is. And I'd normally have a studio session from seven to 11 at, at night. Wow. So, so that's kind of like a typical Tuesday. Yeah. And look how much time and you spent in the car traveling. Exactly. Yep. And now um, I'll have that meeting yep. on, Zoom. on Zoom. I'm now doing choir projects on Zoom, Zoom. Oh, wow. because we're not actually able to do any of that in the real world. Probably not going to be able to do that anytime this year. Yeah. Uh, and in that session that um, I was doing with a client from 7 to 11, over the past few months, we've been able to do that online as well. Uh, and we've just got back to in the past two weeks doing that in the real world. Wow. Isn't it um, and the fact that, you know, it's like I'm able to keep that client going yep. the whole time during lockdown has been amazing. Absolutely. Yep. You know, Absolutely. Um, yep. but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's strange how you adjust and then you kind of like actually quite like. Yeah. How yep. you, Human, is, human yeah. being adapts and evolves and is very resilient. Absolutely. If that's, if it's taught us anything, it's that, you know, and we do, we've mm -hmm. adjusted so quickly and everybody's just getting on with it. You know, sure. It is nice every now and again to have a break and see someone face to face and get out of oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the virtual world. But you know, for me, it's been working really well and I, I think it's fantastic and it's actually brought loads of opportunities as well. Absolutely. What would you say is, um, with you know the clients that you've been dealing with, what's been kind of their main obstacle or main or the main kind of problem that they've been kind of looking to kind of get past? Yeah, like I'm finding in the moment, a lot of people like they might ask it in a few different ways, but it all it all boils down to the same type of thing and something that we covered actually the other day in in a webinar that I was doing. And then when people just don't know what strategy to put in place, how do they, how do they actually make content? How do they keep um, per persistent and keep in front of their audience regularly? And what type of content do they need to keep doing? So we came, I came back to this three words, really. Um, quality, variety, and consistency. Mm -hmm. And for me, as, as you mentioned earlier, you mentioned pretty much the same thing if people really just take the time to think about putting together quality work, doesn't have to be perfection, but just something that's quality and engaging, you know, not boring, as you mentioned, do it consistently and try and come at people from a slightly different angle as well. You know, one day if it's yeah. audio, one day it's video, one day it's a written blog post, one day it's long, one day it's short, you know, if just like anything, if you eat the same thing every day, you're going to get bored. Exactly. Yeah. So it mix it up hitting people from a million angles so you keep your audience engaged and they're always wondering what's coming next and that's how you build your following 
And then they actually will search for you because they'll be looking forward to what you're going to do next. You know, so I kind of just brought it down to those three things, but that's pretty much what we've been talking about. No, absolutely. You know, and I, it's, 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 it always comes down to that, that same thing. It's, and it's like, don't be boring, be yeah. consistent, you know? Yeah. So um, no, but uh, I, I mean, I've, I've found that uh, there's been, there was a client who I was talking to last week um, and they were asking, they were, they were kind of like, oh, I never really thought of, for example, they never thought of podcasting yep. as, a, as, a, as a way to go for, for their business because they're thinking, well, how, how would that work? And I'm like, well, it can work in any number of ways, you know, Absolutely. and because, because of the nature of what it is that they're doing, there's, there's the brand building aspect of it just from sharing content that is about the nature of the business that they're in that yep. people would just find it entertaining and just, and in, engaging from that point of view. But, um, and then there's the lead gen side of things where, because you're in front of people, then it's like, oh yeah, we have this as well. People are, are then subtly seeing the products and services that these, Absolutely. these people have, but, Absolutely. you know, rather than the hard sell, yeah. you know? And I'm glad you brought that up, you know, cause that's another phenomenon or another trend that I'm seeing is that, Everybody is absolutely fascinated at the moment by podcasts and podcasters and everybody is dying to get on a podcast to share their message. And the, the most interesting absolutely. thing is podcasting has been around for 10 plus years, but it's almost made a resurgence. Maybe it's because it's digital now. It's easy to put together. It's easy to, to be, be on a podcast. It's just become crazy. I think there's, I think there's several things to that. I think, all of those the, the points that you make are spot on. I also think that there's just been such a, a massive overdevelopment of data, stroke data, yeah. um, yeah. that you know, like we're just inundated with content from everywhere. Yeah. Um, so podcasting has become this thing that because it can it can be passive, you know, we can be in the car doing something or we could be you know cooking a meal or yeah. doing we can be doing something else whilst we're listening to a podcast yeah. sure. whereas if it's a video or you know you're you're visually drawn to that and you can't really be doing something else but you can have a podcast going on in the background whilst you're doing some other activity and because we're we're kind of pulled this way and that with so many you know our attention is constantly being drawn to different things um that kind of passive consumption has just gone on the rise people are like yeah I, i'm really interested in this content but I'm, i've got really I'm, i've got a really busy life yeah absolutely so um and actually the thing for me that's quite interesting is that i've hardly listened to podcasts over lockdown really because because i normally listen to podcasts when i'm traveling yep true in the car and and because I haven't been traveling anywhere, I haven't been listening to podcasts. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's 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 quite interesting. When I, yeah, and I normally you know I've got, I'd be maybe on the train or you know or in the car or, or whatever. Um, yeah. So I think it's got it, it's a life it's a lifestyle thing as well more than, more than anything else. Uh, that's you know, a really good point. I, I never really thought yeah. of it that way, but I think that's another really powerful point of why podcasting is really has really taken off and continue, continues to grow because it is it's it's a great way to get content that's useful to you and valuable to you in a very passive way and you can multitask yeah yeah that's really um, I like that but i mean and that, and that's the thing is that you know as as humans we're, we're either going to consume it by reading it by listening to it or or viewing it yeah. um and certainly for me, there's, there's times when I'm, I'm in a mood to, to read. I mean, I, I love all three, so I love to read. Yep. Um, but there's times when I can't be arsed reading a book, you know, so I'm like, I might listen to po a podcast then or, you know. Um, so it, it's, it's always going to be one, one of the three. Um, but you, what suits your lifestyle today? You know, are you, are you going to find, you, have, have you got the time to sit and, you know, watch a video or, are you going to be that busy? You're just going to have something on the background, yeah. you know? So it's, 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, like you say, it's been been around for for years and yeah, years, but a long time. there wasn't the same demands on our attention. I think it's it's like the cumulative effect of smartphones and and smart devices and all this kind of thing and apps, 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 apps. Yeah, and then the fact that all of us have the ability to create all of this content on a phone. Actually, it's funny. I was talking to my wife the other day about we, um, about 12 years ago, I was working with this boy band and sure. we, we did like a, an internet TV show. Uh, and this wasn't really, you know, it was quite hard to do back then because this was, it was pre smartphones just. Yeah. And so literally we had a guy from like the local college who got, you know, got a camera and he would come around and film all the business. So it was basically kind of like a fake reality TV show. Yeah. Uh, and we, everything was set up, everything, yeah. everything about it was totally fake. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he would, you know, with camera and tapes and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, he would the, then give me the tapes and then I'd have to then uh, copy the, the content from the tapes onto a hard drive and then edit it together and then compress the files. And it would just, it was a mammoth, mammoth job. Wow. And I said to my wife, I think it was yesterday, the day before, I said, you know what? If we were doing the boys show now, we could literally just do it on a phone. The entire show. Crazy. Yep. You know, and it's like unbelievable. You know, the fact that, Anybody can do, can do that now. Yep. You know, and, Anybody and, can do and anything. We're all the producers of our own documentary story film. Exactly. And it's that like Gary Vee thing that he always says yeah. about before you're any, whatever your business is, before you're that, you're a media company first. Yep. So true. You know, um, and, and, it, and it is, you know, it's, 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 it's so true. It's just you have, you have the um, wherewithal to be able to do it because you have a phone. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. people are like, oh, I don't do I have the equipment. Yeah, have you got a smartphone? Done. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and that's actually a good point about podcasting. A lot of people don't realize how cost effective and how easy it is to get started. They think it's a whole mammoth um, process where you have to buy all this equipment and maybe rent a studio. And no, don't need any of it. I mean, and you can do it that way. You can you know? Yeah, you and, um, and and. Uh, it totally depends on the kind of show that you're doing and, and, and who's involved and whatever. But um, I think as Zoom has shown us, you know, you can do it that way. I mean, I for years I was I was wanting to to do like a video version of my podcast, and then I was like, Zoom, duh, you know. And I, I it like it was like I couldn't believe how easy it was to then just do it. You know, oh, absolutely. You, can, you, absolutely. you overthink it. You overthink yep. it. Absolutely. When I started podcasting last year, you know, I was bringing in some people to help me film stuff. And then we had to set up, you know, and sync audio with video. And it was a, it was a very complicated oh. task as you, as you know, being a musician and an engineer. Now with zoom, you get two files off you go done quick as quick as anything. Absolutely. I mean, cool. and the thing is like, for me, I'm kind of like, why would you really want to do it any other yeah. way? Yeah. You know, so like you don't have to. No. Um, I mean, from a quality to point of view, fair enough. If I mean, if you're Joe Rogan and you're going to get paid millions to, mm -hmm. to do it, then you've got you know you have the resources there. Let's get some cameras and yeah. find fair enough. But um, you know you can you can literally do it like this and connect with whoever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I think I think the, the long and the short of this very labored point is effectively <laughs> you don't have any excuses for for not doing it yep i like you that. know so true technology Just, is, is so easy to adapt so easy to use um if you don't need if you don't know something jump on google within it'll pull out five articles within two minutes you'll know exactly what you have to do and you're up and running exactly i mean i have literally done everything uh i've i've learned how to do mo most things that i do through google so easy. You know, I mean, an, an awful lot of the, the things that, that I do now and I, and I earn a living from um, are just acquired skills over the years because, all right, was that the thing now? I guess I got to learn how to do that. Yeah. You know, and 
I think this is the thing that was really weird for me whenever whenever I first started business networking and meeting people, you know, outside of the music industry, because it was for me, it was always music industry first. I would meet all these people and I was always really surprised that they only did one job. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like, was he oh that's it, that's all you do. <laughs> and whenever and whenever you're you know, a freelancer, you know, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, you're going to be the content creator first. You're going to be, you're going to do the audio. You're going to do the picture. You're going to do the video. You're going to be the marketing guy. You're going to be the sales guy, yep. you know, all of that. Um, and so much of it is just being, all right, I guess I, I got to do that. So whenever I, I meet these people and it's kind of like, they only, do, I'm like, hold on, you just do that. I do that. Yeah along with the 12 other things that I'll Typically. do today. Yeah, like being, being an entrepreneur in this day and age forces you to become a jack of all trades. You don't have a choice. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and, and that's it. You know, you need to um, just think of everything, yeah. you know. Um, but it's, it's, it, there's another thing, you know, that, that, that whole term, you know, entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I would describe myself as somebody who has entrepreneurial tendencies, but not... Yeah an entrepreneur i always think i think we might have spoken about this before but the whole idea i think if you're richard branson or some you know elon musk and you're wanting to change the world yeah. or do some grandiose kind of scheme or employ loads of people and, and scale and build a business then you're an entrepreneur yeah i agree but i think if you're a small business owner who's kind of thinking in an entrepreneurial way that's a completely different thing yeah, i agree with you I'm, I'm, I'm the same i like my simple one man show uh, existence in what yeah. i do and i am very creative and i love to think laterally and adapt and evolve yeah. but i don't have any aspiration to scale and do all that kind of stuff same same here um here's a question for you right <laughs> have you are there any new skills that you have acquired due to lockdown? Mm. Have, have you been sort of forced to kind of do that, you know, adapting? I mean, obviously we're, we're working online and we're, we're normally the people who are training other people to, to work mm -hmm. online. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. But is there, has it been something that you kind of like, you know what? I didn't do that beforehand and now I'm doing it all the time. Good one. I, I would say getting comfortable with, talking to a camera mm -hmm. because that's something that we didn't do a lot before you know we spoke normally but and even during this interview i'm allowing myself to just look at you because we're having a you know a really cool casual chat and you know i, I really enjoy that as like, opposed to looking as opposed at the to looking at the camera yeah. while i speak I've, I've kind of trained myself if i have to to kind of yeah. do a whole interview where i'm looking straight at the camera and i might just glance down for a second but that took at least yeah. a few months of training really amazing yeah. No, absolutely, and, and, and that, that's something that for ages. I, I mean, I've I'm, there's some friends of mine who I'm still kind of like you're still looking at yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whenever you, when, whenever you're doing videos, yeah. you know, um, you're you're looking at yourself on the camera. You're you're, and you're, you're not connecting with your audience. Then. You know, you want look down the lens, down of, you know, the lens of, of, like you. Yeah. Like yeah. the old, the, like the news readers would have been, and it kind of goes hand in hand with your point a bit earlier when you said you have to be engaging, and yeah. you have to to engage an audience, especially through video means. You have to look dead straight through the camera because your audience has to think that you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. yeah? Whereas if you start looking like over here and over here, you lose people quickly. I think the really funny thing has been, you know, whenever you. Um, We've been seeing like news readers and people who are normally TV presenters or whatever, and they've been doing things from home on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you kind of like, how come you don't know that you need to look at the lens? Yeah, I agree. I noticed that you're, as well. Yeah. You're, you're like, did nobody tell you that? I mean, you know why? Because there's no yeah. teleprompter. That's why. Yeah, and you <laughs> and you just kind of like think of it the same way. It, it's the same. That's you like it whenever you're on tv you're looking at the camera yep straight. same deal yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. what about you what, what have you kind of um been forced to upskill in or, or grow in over the last little while i would say the the webinar thing um and it's something that i'm i'm 
very much still developing because I'm going to be doing my own webinars because mostly um, I've been doing webinars for other people. Gotcha. But effectively putting together, you know, a PowerPoint on a webinar that's not tedious. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, ordinarily, if, I, if I'm in the real world, I don't like to use a lot of PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. But um, just the, na the nature of the way things are, it's instructive, you know, and I have to kind of really use it. Especially um, on Zoom, actually. It does, it does help a lot to a virtual meeting. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, and, and to be honest with you, the thing is as well as the, the, with a lot of the webinars that I've been doing, there's so much information. Yeah. So what I do is everybody who, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody who will be on any of the webinars that I do, they, they all end up getting a copy of the slides anyway. Right. So I will kind of effectively break the cardinal rule of um, PowerPoint and have shitloads of information on a slide yeah. because I'm kind of like, okay, we're going to cram all this into an hour, but with the view that you're going to have all of this to dissect and look at later. Gotcha. Yeah, so right. this is all the information that I want you to have to take away and apply. You're not going to in an hour suddenly know how to apply this to your business. You need to go away, look at it, dissect it and go through it and think, okay, how can I apply this to my business? but you're then going to have it as reference material. Yeah. So again, you know, if, if that was in the real world, I, I, I wouldn't have necessarily a, like a top 10 list of these are the things you should do, yeah. you know, uh, and, it, and it can be quite wordy. Um, but I think just due to the nature of it as well, it's kind of like, no, I want you to be able to take something that's practical and, and useful and use this um, whenever you kind of, you're, you're a, you were, you know, done with the, yeah. the meeting yeah. but um yeah I, I would say that has been um the key thing and and appreciating that it's just a gig yeah for, for me it's it's just the same as being on stage I, that's actually to be honest with you that i've actually had to <laughs> to, to dial it back because yeah. um i'm kind of like camera oh there's a camera <laughs> it's a stage grab my guitar yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and the amount of times I'm kind of like, Greg, you're not doing a routine. You're not doing a, com a comedy bit. Just kind of give them the information and leave. Um, but having said that, you know, the thing that I have really enjoyed about doing the webinars is that why can't it be entertaining? Why can't it be funny? Or, um, uh, and that's when I have been doing the webinars, everyone's been saying, okay, that was really entertaining. That was a lot of fun. But, you really knew what you're talking about. It was very useful, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I kind of, I, th I think learning how to be okay with that, I think has been the thing as well. It's just that bridging the two worlds of me as a performer and me as a, a I was going to use the word educator, but, uh, but a marketer really, you know. Um, well, webinar, that, you know, host, or webinar. Yes, you know, yeah. Presenter. Um, I think, you know, yeah. And, it, and it's just like, okay, kind of, so we're somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just kind of getting getting used to to how that works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah I mean, because I, I mean, I, I never done anything like that before. I mean, obviously yeah, doing either. presenting, uh, you know, in the in the real world is is one thing. Yeah, yeah. And and also, I found that like it is quite, you know, it does take a little time to get used to presenting to even a Zoom meeting or a, a virtual webinar with forty or fifty people sometimes, even if it's a networking meeting. It's yeah. Like, oh, I'm actually talking to 50 people right now. That's taking a little bit of getting used to. The funny thing was the first <laughs> webinar that I did, um, they said, yeah, we've got actually quite a few people booked for it. I'm like, oh, okay, right. Um, and whenever I was, I first started, and I, I, I literally was doing the sort of opening couple of slides, just before I, I, I started, I could see oh, there was about you know, 18, 20 people on. I was like, okay, yeah. fine. Um, and they said, no, just a bunch of people are coming on as well. So, okay. Uh, and then what happened was I got <laughs> to the end of the thing and then I kind of, you know, sort of closed my slides and there was about 55 people there. Wow. And I was like, whoa. I had no, I, I, like, I had no idea. Yeah. There was, you know, there was 55 people there the whole time. 
Yeah. But um, and that's the thing you just don't know. It's you know, whenever you're in in a real room and you're like, there's all these people. Yeah. But literally, people can join that call, and you're like, oh my god, there's like yeah. how yeah. many people? Yeah. And actually, I, I, by the same token, here's another fun thing. I had to record a um, a pre-recorded presentation for a global um, marketing conference the other day. So I had to be at home, lights on, mic ready, dressed up, going mm -hmm. through the whole presentation, knowing that I'm just talking to my camera and it's, it's just being recorded and there's nobody even listening to me. That was quite difficult. Like keeping yeah, the energy I up mean, without even uh, and you're kind of knowing like, that- I'm not, I'm not getting anything energy. back. Yeah, yeah. zero. <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, but I suppose, I mean, I've, I've, I've actually got to do that um, like I've got to do a four part yep. um, web training thing for, the, for this company. Um, and it's going to be that it's going to be the same thing. It's like four parts and it's going to be you know, an hour long each time. I'm kind of like, wow. Right. And there's nobody <laughs> there. Yeah. So it's, it's quite, it's quite a weird kind of thing. Yeah, but I, I suppose it's like whenever, whenever comedians are talking about, you know, they're, they're trying to do, like trying to do comedy online yeah you know or anything like that same with trying to do music as well whenever you're getting yes. zero feedback yeah. or the delay you know it's it's just not the same yeah definitely there's certain things that when you need that energy back from the audience to keep you going and you know, yeah. presenting and music and comedy and entertainment is all are those things that's really interesting yeah i mean the, the audience is part of it you know sure it feeds it Oh, sure. So what about, what about yourself? What have you got uh, coming up at the moment, Darren? Ah, uh, so uh, just a, a lot of, uh, you know, same old stuff. I do a lot of photography. So my photography is starting to pick up a little bit. I've been doing some lots of headshots, lots of um, bit of corporate work. Um, then doing lots of social media stuff, doing some webinars, doing some marketing courses, some podcast courses. And um, what else do I do? Yeah, so just kind of, and then and obviously working on content, you know, just getting my content out there, trying to be religious every mm -hmm. day if I can, putting out some stuff that's interesting and uh, has some variety and just keep on pumping out the, the strategy. Yeah, that's, I mean, we, it's it. practicing, what, practicing what we preach, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Indeed. Um, well, I'm kind of, I'm in the middle of a video edit today, um, which is kind of tedious, but um, <laughs> it, is what, it is what it is. Um, so as soon as I've got that, that out of the way, then I've got to, I've got to do um, a marketing strategy plan for a business this week, yeah, nice um, which is, uh, that's actually quite fun because it's just like, I've got loads of mad, crazy ideas, whether they adopt them or not is yeah. to totally up to them. But um, that's my favorite part yeah. as well. My favorite thing is coming up with ideas and strategies because, you know, it's just your brain, your creative juices start flowing and, you know, you really feel alive because all these, all these neurons are firing and these ideas are coming to mm -hmm. you saying, well, where did that come from? Wow. I didn't even yeah, think I could no, come exactly. up with that. I love that. Yeah. So cool. um, oh, quick music question for you. Yeah, is sure. there anything that you're listening to? Mm at the moment this this new that i might not have heard of that's kind of like a cool thing that's happening uh, over there not really like i've been listening to a lot of old stuff lately see I'm going this is back. the curse of guys in our 40s that's yeah. what we're doing yeah, I'm, I'm in going back to uh steve winwood oh yes chris christopherson yeah and chris christopherson um I've been seeing some old stuff. Prince. I actually, I actually watched, speaking of Prince, I, we always get onto the topic of Prince when we talk about music. But someone on social media mentioned to me, I think I put out a post the other day and I think you, I tagged you in on it and I said, this is too good not to share. It was Prince doing a guitar, guitar solo, solo and he was Tom just, Petty, yeah. Oh, he was insane. And then someone else responded and said, oh, Prince is my favorite artist. Have you seen the documentary? And I said, whoa, is there a new documentary? She said, yeah, yeah, it was called Purple Rain. I said, oh, of course. But I said, like, it's semi-biographical. And mm -hmm. it's was from ages ago. I don't know how many years ago. So I actually re-watched it, and I loved it. 
I think I've I think I've seen that one. Purple Rain, um, the actual movie where he acts as you know as a musical artist. And oh, actually, Purple Purple yeah, Rain. Purple the Rain, movie. the book, the movie. Yeah. Are you? Are you? Did you never seen it? Oh yeah, I've seen it years ago. And right, then I right, rewatched right, right. it again, and I said, Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm loving this. This is awesome. It's funny. I I kind of love it. Whenever whenever he died, around the time he died, I kind of went through all you know all that stuff again. You know, yeah. but, um, the thing the thing that I'm actually super excited about just now is that there's a deluxe version of Sign of the Times, Ooh. which is coming out in September, wow. um, and my brother Ed, um, who is super lovely and nice, um, ordered it for me. Um, and it's like eight discs at least, you know, and there's something like 46 unreleased tracks that are, that are on it. That's insane. And, and, and that kind of, that era of Prince was kind of like my absolute favorite for me. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the month of September taken up for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. basically what I'll be doing, you know. Absolutely. It's, um, anyway, good to chat, sir. Yeah, great chat. Always have a pleasure chatting with you. And I love where our conversations, you know, move through to. You never know what we're going to chat about. And I kind of, that's what I love about it. Absolutely. No idea what the hell's going on at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I think the, the, the hilarious thing is, you're in Sydney. I'm in Glasgow. It's 24 degrees there. Yep. It's pissing down here. Yep. But I look like I'm in some sun-kissed yep. island. You've just stepped off, you know, the Calvin Klein what? underwear model shoot or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Good, good. That would be a nice one. But, um, yeah, it, I mean, hair, and makeup, literally... hair and makeup has been done. Look oh, God, yeah. Man. But um, it, I'm I'm literally I'm glancing out that window there, and it is chucking it down outside. Well, wow. it is horrendous. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, good to chat, sir. And um, good to chat, my man. We'll, we'll we will um catch up again soon, and let's not leave it like as as long. Definitely, good um, idea. We'll try to do it every month. Yes, indeed. All right, Darren. Talk to you soon, good my man. Speak. See you soon. Take care. Bye.